Today I've set myself the challenge of painting this beautiful mountain scene. I'm not quite sure where it is actually. It's uh, maybe the Rockies or might be the Alps. I'm not sure. Um, but I know in the mountains, I mean in the Rockies and in the Alps, you get this amazing light and uh, shafts of beautiful warm light. But we've got in the distance there the blue of this mountain uh, with some snow on, actually on it. I noticed there. But the uh, real challenge is to try and get these uh, um, levels so that we get some sense of distance. You see these sort of paler, not so uh, bright, still blue, largely blue. And even a, a mountain range beyond this initial piece here uh, is also a little bit lighter. And we've got the clouds. How do we get these clouds with the backlit coming there? So we've got a, like a rim of light around them and we've got wispy bits here. But another nice feature of this, of course, is the uh, we've got these um, lovely uh, uh, pine trees here, firs and the shapes. I've got to try and catch them. And most important to get this lovely uh, different greens and yellows and we've got here in the foreground some purple flowers as well mountain alpines and the path which takes our eye in you see the nice and a, a shadow these plants are casting a shadow on there so i've got lots of uh, challenges to do but you'll see i've already sketched it out and um so I've got to uh, think about this. It's always a good idea to think about how you're going to tackle it. Um, and uh, I think we've obviously got to, we've got to work from light to dark. So I think we need to get some um, these lights, get this sky area in uh, with a little bit of... Um, cadmium, cobalt I should say, cobalt and cerulean as well. So I'm going to keep it fairly light and I'm not going wet on wet, I'm just going to tickle this stuff in here. Remembering it's going to get a lot lot lighter so I think I better beef it up a little bit come over my fir tree there so again let's make sure we've got enough and through that central area there's quite a band of fairly strong blues which come a little bit down through the mountains and there behind that tree um, and I've got to have a fairly pale bits here because I want to leave some of these whites but in this area I've got quite a quite a dark cloud actually um, or the shadow side I should say so I'm going to just see if I can capture some of that uh, here, a little darker. I'm using my calligraphy brush. So I've got a little bit of umber on this as well. Yes, I think I have to keep them fairly dark. Because I want to 
show the contrast with the white. So the clouds are sort of backlight, I think, coming down through them. Yes, I think I would leave that. A little bit of, a bit more shadowed area. But let's leave that now. Because um, I want wispy. Let's use a little bit of blue still. To wispy blue through there. Right, okay. Uh, perhaps a little bit more blue behind the fur, I think. Yes, we've got to have a bit darker there. Bit of cobalt. Behind that mountain side there. Right, let's leave that. Now, um, I've got to get some washes in. Um, this far mountain range there, behind the this range, is quite a bit washed out, quite pale, although, no, that's, uh, I think I have to make it a little darker, it's not showing well, so, got a little bit of umber there, a little bit of dark, bit of grey, I'll leave that for the moment. Um, this bit down here, this is all full of um, conifers, forested. So I'm going to just go in here to map my shape out. Some blues in there in the background. So we've got to get these washes. Trying to preserve some of the lights. And we can... I think we need to put some wash in here, I think. A little bit darker there. Um, now let's just wash in. I don't want to have lots of specks of light, white of the paper at this point anyway. Uh, so I'm getting my fair um, bit of white covered. Just get the masses in really. That's what I want to do. Um, and then yes, I think a little bit of bit of bluey green we could take behind here, showing through bits of our mountain there. That's got to be the same. I'm looking at tonal values, really. Right, I think I can drop some darker colours in, I think. 
darker greens and a bit of blue fairly dark greens It's very wet at the moment. Uh, I think we'll let that dry up a little bit. So let's get some... Oh, I've got a little bit of colour, I suppose we can go with it. Well, it's, it is damp. So we get some bleeding. Get me some various tones we'll go back with a darker mixture when it's a bit drier I think but let's just let's chance a little bit of Payne's grey in here a bit of green that mountain all right Okay, All right, let's get some of these masses in here then. So we get some greens, um, some fairly warm green, uh, warm greens and yellows. Yes, it's a very yellowy green. I think I'm going to just wash in actually there there's quite a lot of yellow showing even coming down here this is warmth gives us nice warm color we've got lots of yellows here so i'll vary it a little bit this let's put a bit of yellow ochre as well with our washes of course we would come in with some different greens but just trying to map out some of these lighter elements well we can um now let's go get a bit of darker green here with a bit of yes yeah, certainly in, in this area Over there as well I can put some ultramarine with my blue that's always a good way of stepping it up a little bit and that comes all along here green here get some darker bits in there Let's get some different green. I've got some hookers there. I'm coming with a drier brushwork a little bit later I think let's get some more yellow though just in our foreground we've got some really nice yellows here yellow bright 
yellowy greens, I should say. Set against that dark mass here, which I will darken up a little bit. It's sort of bands of different greens. So we'll try and do that with them um, with a dry brush. But let's just flick in some of this. And we've got a path going up here as well, which we can deal with a bit later. Um, yeah, so many. I want to keep it light though. I don't want to get it muddy. Muddy and that's always a problem. I've got a shadow. Along, oh, well, I've got a nice pathway here. Which is going to, I think I'm going to put that in right away with some uh, raw sienna. It's a nice warm colour. Uh, it's looking a little bit greeny. That's, yes, I think this. Yes, we can do that. That's a bit better. Yes, we put some texture in that with some rocks. Of course, we can. We can do that. Uh, And along the this edge, we've got a shadow side as well. These these grasses here, in alpines, they are casting a shadow onto the path. So I need to step up that some of my darks here. I'm looking at every section of the of the picture to try and see where I need to, where darks are required. And say this is a big section here in our foreground. The different greens as well. I think we could go with that right now. Yes, it's nice with watercolour how you get this, how it bleeds. You have some, do, well, you seek to have some control of it, but it's um, often not the case. So what you have to do is you know, respond to the situation as it changes, as it has its will of its own, as they say. Uh, try not to be phased by it, sort of build on it. This is often the way, I think, to do that. And we've got... You see, there's kind of bands of darker segments of vegetation coming there. Um... Yes, I think wash in there. I've got to put some texture into my uh, path there, but there's also some lovely, lovely reds and purples 
let's get them a little mixture and just dab in a few of these trying to keep it fresh um, along here got some violet and I've got some that's a little bit vivid I want us more of a shadowy color so you can see how it's bleeding there so I need to we can let that do its thing for the moment We'll put some crimson alizarin in a bit of a blue mix so we can. Um, oh, look at the way that's come there, bleeding there. Oh, yes, we can do with that. A little bit darker so. Put a little bit more blue with it. I've got some blue shadow under here. Right, let's leave this for the moment. I think we need to deal with our big mountain mass here but I've got some darker this is dried off a little bit for me now a nice shaft of dark in there I've got to get that some of these furs here I'm going to use a different brush in a minute for that. Uh, I don't. Uh, so our dark seem to step up here, and it's a dark element here. leave this perhaps until we've got it a little bit drier still chance a few wet on wet elements to it uh, but we need to as I say let's get straight on with that mountain side um, now let's as I say it's I got to be careful not to chase this photograph because a photograph is one thing and a painting is another so is that the right tone I wonder Yes, it's not far off. We can I've got to try and leave some snow as well. There's snow on this bank here, on this side. Yes, I think we can a little bit darker in places so 
definitely against the skyline and say there's snow there and let's get a nice just a faint hint of blue let's get some blue going again there I think we need to blue this out yes I think I've got to get that blue so we can push it back I'm painting over some of my conifers which I've got here uh, that's not a problem because they're going to be painted in with a much darker paint so I can still see their shapes um, and then I've got to get a, a, a pale washed out um, bit to the far mountain range there but I've got to get it contrasting with this one in the foreground uh, can you see is it working uh, that's more darker down here or a little bit yeah, I think we can do with that. Let's uh, push a bit of a mountain there. Right. Now let's think about this. Um, yes, I think we let's go for a smaller brush. Let's get. Um, Actually, before I do that, I change my mind. I think I'm going to get a number four or number six round. Can you see this? About this size. There's a number missing, worn out, I'm afraid. Uh, but I've got some nice, I've got some nice Sennelier paint here, which I was given. A few years ago, sort of French paint, and it's very creamy and lovely colours. So I've got to get some yellows in here, and I think we can wash some there, and also. I want some warmth washes into here right up against the the dark line there right let me think what other ones have I got um, yes I need Use some of these Sennelier colours and see what we can do with them. Yes, you have some lovely reds and purples, actually. I can do that. I think we need some blue mixed with that. Got some phthalo. Give me some darks. Still a little bit wet actually. Um, I think we still need to let things dry off a little bit. But I can use a little bit, a bit of dry brush here. Give me a, 
a little bit of texture. You can mix some different greens using Sennelier now with some Yes, we can do something like that. Um, yes, yeah, some different green, perhaps. Let's get. Too many of these, these white bits showing. Uh, we could put, we need to get some little shapes for our rocks and things. As I say, shadows are coming out here. get some of these trees in now so let's get a a nice smallish brush which can give me some nice marks here this is a little rigger here no this is a number four round four round rather data rowney so I'm going to get a bit of nice green going or dark darkish color um, to try and get some more of these grasses I could use a rigger actually I think I probably will in a moment but we can just say the timing is everything with with watercolor you have to get it choose your moment really when are you going to put those those marks in too soon and they bleed too much but that might be what you want so you choose get as much control as you can Um, I think I might get a little rigger in a minute. Got some dry, dry marks here. Suggest our grasses coming in here. But I think we need to get straight on with these, um, these conifers so let's get a nice uh, darkish color I think with some of these trees got to stress the the shape of them of course that's, that's what makes them stand out makes a Painting interesting. In fact, some of these are quite big masses of dark, so we'll do that. And here we've got more darks, more furs. And of course, we've got to get this this tree line along here but uh, I think we use a smaller brush because they have to be finer but we can do something like this 
So I've got the nice sort of broken edge. Show those those furs there. And we've got a really big one here. And the main one, we've got one here. Got to get that one. We can put the um, the trunk in a bit later. We can. do it now. It's quite a mass actually of so I'm just trying to hint at them. I'm going to make sure it's grounded as well. So let's get a bit of ultramarine and a much darker element here and these in the distance a big bank of trees I want to set this in front of the um, of the mountain range behind and there's a nice dark sort of ravine here. Try and suggest that. I said you can't put all the, the detail in, you just have to squint your eyes up a little bit and see um, where your darks are in your reference. And remembering, as I've said before on some videos, that the uh, photographs tend to lose a lot of detail in the darks, uh, but also in the light areas where you have extreme brights. Um, so be mindful of that. And be on your guard not to chase the um, the photograph so much. This is a nice fur there, breaking that line against the mountain behind. So I'm going to see if I can bring that up a little bit. Yes, there we go. A little bit better. Um, I think also I need to ground some dark here so it comes up against that bit of brighter colour. Bit of yellows there. Again, got to be very careful not to go too literally with my photograph. Always a mistake. You look at the picture and you think, oh, that's a lovely picture. And you go after that. And you really try to, to recreate it. And then you go too far. It becomes too heavy, too dark. But I think I need to um, push some mount, some colour in here. Yes, this needs a little bit more definition here. A little bit too dark, too light rather. So 
a little bit of dry brush here. You see, it's my little round Dalarona here. By doing that, I can perhaps leave some areas reserved for the snow line. Um, I wonder whether I step it up a bit there. There we go. Um, now let us think. Let me think a little bit. Just the shape, the general shape. Um, now what am I going to do in here? I think uh, let's get some nice yellow going um because this is a feature of my reference actually was this beautiful uh yellows but of course they've got to be set some against some of those greens as well so there's a bright bright yellows here but if I lay in something like that and then we'll put some darks up against it in a moment some darker greens I think and we've got some yellows out here but let's get a bit of um, nice greens little little stands of alpines grasses So here I am putting some darker greens up against that bit of yellow and I'm going to put in this here as well. I'm going to put some really stiff strong green mixtures here trying to suggest some of these grasses as well on the edge of my pathway. Um, actually I can see, I think we could, one more, let's get one more little conifer, little young trees growing here, give me some interest here. Yes, there are several little trees just starting to grow there and let's put a lighter green there let's put a bit of yellow with a bit of green there and make a fairly light Stand. I think we can make it yellower than that. Yes. That's right, we can do that. And then we put some, some greens. Some viridian perhaps here. against it. That's it. That's what we need. We can get some viridian here. A little bit of dry brush there. 
So we'll take our eye into the picture. Um, I think we can do a little, this is beginning to get a little drier so I can flick a few grasses in here. Try and suggest. But I could put some of these um, nice alpine flowers. I've got some lovely Sennelier paints which have got some gorgeous colours in. In fact the set was purchased with the idea of doing some uh, floral uh, flower and botanical work but I'm afraid I haven't got down to that yet but since we've got some flowers let's let's break them out in a minute right now I'm looking again at my mountain that could be fog down here couldn't it mist and foggy yes I think I need to show some of these conifers on the skyline now on that line I just use the edge of my brush like this project one or two faintly into the line there but I notice I think I need a little bit darker here yes I think we do because I need to set the dark against the light a less saturated color of the of that mountainside there so this is pretty dense forest actually but I can leave little elements of light in there yes I think we can do that But let's, uh, as I said, let's get into some of the, um, the Sennelier colours that I've got for my flowers. So I'm going to choose a little tiny brush, which is, uh, let me have a look here. This is a major brushes number two, whoever major brushes number two I don't know where I got that from but let's get some um, of this these Sennelier colors and see what we've got we've got some beautiful um, purples I think let me just get the tube open and have a look um, what have I got there can you see that? Is that focusing? That is purple dioxide, dioxide, Sennelier, colour number 917 if anybody's interested. But so I'm going to get now, open the brush, open the tube and just dab a few in. Um, I think they need a bit of more water though to show their colours. I'm just looking at my reference. I've got various stands of them actually. They come like this. I 
think we are. I'll get some reddish colours as well, I think. Yes, I think that's... Some of those are called for here. Use some of these colours for... Give us some interesting grasses. Um, I think I could actually darken up some of my my trees certain parts of it Got some darky Put the bow in the trunk in there let's get some um, Payne's grey mixed with that blue there in my enough foreground as well so it's quite dark some of the other ones as well there it's very dark actually against the, the light there um, and also these you see good could help give some shape to our furs again it was quite a massive trees here yes by darkening this up hopefully it will push the mountain back a little bit that's the I hope anyway that's it that's coming out on my frame a little bit there um, I think I can darken up here so it contrasts with this bit of golden colors here and we've got some let's put some conifers there that will help define that line a little bit line of trees there a few um, let me see yes I think I don't want to do too much more it's only, it's an only impression. It's not a photo realism. We've, you've got a great picture. They don't really, we'll never do better than that for accuracy, but I'm trying to create some atmosphere here. I like it to look a little painterly. Right, 
Now, what about those little um, flecks of uh, white? I think we need to kill them a little bit. Let's put a bit of ochre. We'll dull them down a little bit. Or um, different colours, a little bit of red there. Let's go some yellows. Um, let's put something more interesting in our little bit of texture in to this pathway. Again, at my hip mountain side, I think I can alter the shape a bit there. There we go. So, what have we done? Tricky. Using this little tiny brush again, give me some grass shapes projecting over. what I've got to ask myself. Can I improve? That's what you've got to ask. Will I improve anything? Say we've got some let's get some greens. Get some strong green going. Um That's better. I've got a little bit of um, viridian here. Very stiff mixture because it's still quite wet there. I want to suggest a few grasses projecting over my pathway perhaps. And remember to alter their size as they go. Things are closer to us, they're usually going to be a lot bigger. Let's put a bit of umber in some of our, uh, our path, I think. A little bit of raw sienna as well. A 
and we've got the odd the odd rock as well mm. so I'm standing back now and have a look and see whether I've done enough um, could possibly step up a little bit of dark in places in our hillside there stand of these trees No, a bit more water. Um, yes, quite dark up there. Set more against the bright of the sky. So things tend to be a little bit more. So... Um, as I said, I've got, to, I've got to leave that little bit of light down there in that valley. That gives me good contrast. But let's just suggest some more of these young firs growing here. And coming down the hillside there. I'm going to stand... Um, and I'm just wondering whether I should look a little darker in there. Try and suggest some contrast with that mountain side behind it. But I think I'm going to possibly leave it at that. Uh, only one other thing I might do now, though. Uh, let's get a bit of um, gouache to step up some of my lights. We can do that. Um, that's uh, a good idea, I think. The purists, of course, don't think you should use a gouache. Uh, but uh, I don't know. It's good enough for John Singer Sergeant, so it's probably good enough for the rest of us. He used it apparently. But let's get a little bit um, on that cloud around the margin. It's, I've, I've got quite a lot of white around that margin of that shadow area I think I'm going to just see if I can step it up a little bit around the, the edge of it there and um Maybe we put some whites in. Although having just taken some time to stab out a lot of whites, you still need some. Some of our shrubs are catching a little bit of light on them. So, uh, Especially in here. Um, a little bit. Let's do a few sky holes in there. Or a little bit of light showing catching it 
although I want it largely a dark mass. Again, trying to take my own advice not to chase the uh, the photographs. Won't do. Well, there you have the finished painting. Uh, my battery ran out, as usual, I'm afraid. Um, but there we have uh, our mountain scene. Uh, it's quite colourful and I've tried to keep it fairly light uh, and airy with a lot of uh, looseness about it, but mainly the, the light touch, which is what I'm trying to get with my uh, watercolour. Sometimes I go a little bit heavy perhaps, but um, this one I've tried to, uh, to maintain, be a bit more disciplined. And you can see in the mountain, see how it's much lighter and fade away with some snow still on the tops there and the clouds. I put a little bit of gouache around the margin of some of those clouds to help them uh, stand out from their shadow side. But anyway, I hope you liked it. Uh, if, you're, uh, if you do, please give me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. It's uh, no charge for that, but it helps the, the channel grow. So thanks for watching.